We are live, everybody. Yo, yo, yo. Tell me what you know. Welcome to the Sunshine Show. Woo! <laughs> Today, tonight, this afternoon, this morning, wherever you may roam in the world, I have the most fabulous guest for you all. I have the one, the only, the most amazing, the most unique, the most beautiful, the most zappa oh my of God. them all. Ali of Flumux in the house. What's up? Babe? Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me, Sunshine. I really, really appreciate it. All, all of those adjectives you used to describe me. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm ready to have fun. Awesome. I'm so happy to have you on this show. Thank you for being so flexible. I know I've kind of been all over the place with rescheduling and I appreciate you working with me. Not a problem at all. Uh, like I said, we, you know, I, I've been completely scatterbrained and all over the place lately with everything that I've been, I've got going on. So totally get you. Awesome. So tell me, where do you reside? I live um, about 40 minutes south of uh, Nashville in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Um, born and raised out here, out here in the, uh, the, the buckle of the Bible Belt, Tennessee. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've just been around music more or less um, just within the culture. Not even, I would never really like grew up with it, like in a family sense, but, you know, it was just around and, you know, that's just how I kind of came into it all. It's just from having, happening to be born here, you know? Yeah. Awesome. So I noticed in one of your promo pictures, you were wearing a, um, dolly shirt and i am a huge dolly parton fan i'm originally from texas i live in california now but tell me um what kind of influence dolly parton had on your life being from um nashville or close to nashville i mean it's like you know everybody loves dolly parton frankly like as you're you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't and if you're from tennessee i feel like she's basically the queen here she could just kind of overthrow the government at any point and no one would really care and it would probably work out better for everybody in the state anyway so you know dolly parton i didn't you know it was funny as a, as a kid i really only knew her originally for the, the theme park dollywood out in Gatlinburg and it was only like a little bit later that I was like oh she she actually kicks ass <laughs> like you know as, as a musician you know and um I had the privilege of uh performing nine to five recently at a wedding gig oh. um, on vocals yeah and that you know I feel like that's like a ride a ride of passage for uh you know any Tennessee girl that has to perform <laughs> ever yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. <laughs> I love Dolly Parton. I'm a huge fan of Willie Nelson. And I just yeah. think that um, it needs to be Nelson and Parton 2024, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, to be as much as I, you know, I don't think we should have celebrities as presidents necessarily. I would probably vote for that ticket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Allie, let's talk a little bit about how you got into playing the bass. Um, by accident. <laughs> um, it, you know, I didn't like trip over one necessarily, but um, I was in um, sixth grade and um, some kids at my school were trying to do the talent show and they wanted to do the, uh, the Weird Owl parody of uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Okay. Nobody played bass. So they were just like, here, have this. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I don't even think we ended up performing, but uh, I had a bass and then it, but it really didn't start to like, it, it took maybe about a year before I actually really, really started to delve into it. I think I was probably like 13, but okay. 12 or 13 by that point. And uh, um, what really probably sealed the deal was hearing Black Sabbath the first time. Geezer Butler is kind of still my, my one of my main inspirations inspirations to this day and uh that, that kind of drove me into the the low end of things forever it seems yeah there's just something super special about the bass guitar and once you play it and you hit those super heavy notes and feel that vibration and that energy it's hard yes to come down <laughs> it, it, it's it you know it's it's such a more powerful like dare i say ballsier feeling than anything any, any other instrument that that i, that I 
play around with and like I don't know it, I feel like I mean being able to just like lay the that that groundwork for an entire uh show is just it makes or breaks the band for me so yeah. I try to I try to put my all into it absolutely and I have been doing my research with Don who is in the chat what's up Don um we have been watching a lot of your YouTube videos and I'm oh sorry my god, <laughs> oh my god I am just so impressed I already have been following you. you for a while and there's just something about you that really makes you stand out from everybody else but holy shit when I saw you on stage I was <laughs> fine blown just everything about the music the stage show fucking everything i'm gonna drop the ban in the comments so when we're done with this you guys make sure Thank to go you. check out flumux but don't leave yet because we have a whole hour to chat um tell me about your band and what goes into this amazing stage show the preparation and the work because it has to be a lot um you know <sighs> Only I started the band right out, right out of high school. Um, me and my best friend, uh, we formed Flummox, uh, like right, just right out, right out of it. And uh, it started off as just like a little trio, and then it, as the years have gone on, we've just added more musicians and people that wanted to be a part of it, and you know, be our pals and make weird music and do some of the dumbest shit ever on on stage. And um, we, because <laughs> like we we're we're influenced just as much by like you know um musicians and things like that as we are like theater and like uh even like sketch comedy like monty python or the wise kids you know uh play like an influence in what we do and of course then like the artists that kind of merge that sort of thing like frank zappa or alice cooper or mr bungle and we just kind of have this idea to make music that not only like like it, we it kind of enables us to be like musical chameleons i call it like genre fluid we can play with like metal bands or folk bands or jazz bands or you know whatever kind of genre you might throw at us because we have songs and different uh types of material that can fit into pretty much like any kind of bill but we tend to le like to lead lean a little bit heavier uh, um, most of the time for sure because <laughs> we're that's just what we uh, grew up with and love to do the most because there's nothing better than just playing just heavy heavy riffs and in, in, a, in a room full of people um, at least for me you know but but yeah that's um we, we started the band and we've been um, at it for it'll be 10 years in August Wow. so it's 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 been crazy and um yeah our stage show has just um like it's just gotten weirder and crazier and we've added different sort of elements to it um mainly for our own amusement <laughs> <laughs> just to keep it keep it uh fun and exciting and fresh for you guys huh well i mean you know the one my my philosophy or at least one of them is um whether the person at the club who happens to see us likes the music or not they're going to remember what it was that they saw um and we've certainly left that impression on people whether they liked it or not <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. yeah i i have to say that i've just oh i was so impressed and you are just adorable up there and you are just running oh my around god. and you're Thank just you. shredding on the fucking bass and just like oh my god and <laughs> your vocals and just everything oh my god i want to see y'all live so bad i cannot wait till you come to cali we will we absolutely plan on it at I some point I will be there. Let's see who is in the chat. You guys, thank you all for hanging out with me and Allie. If you guys have any questions, please drop them in the chat. We'll get to them as soon as possible. We have Salvador and Natasha in the house. What's up? We got Paul. We got my mama. What's up, Mama Cantu? We got Don. <laughs> we got, oh man, I'm sorry. I cannot pronounce your name, but SC. Greetings from Belfast, ladies. Greetings. Um, and Don saying he fucking loved it. He likes the show. He says, what did I say? Progressive metal, punk, progressive with some jazz in it. I mean, that's pretty much. <laughs> but that we, we definitely uh, have, have those 
all those vibes going on at the same time randomly at certain points in our music. It's um, like I said, heavy, weird, strange. Um, at least, you know, that's just what comes out naturally, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, we just like to be eccentric with it. Uh, and it's awesome. Um, I That's not even the proper word. I can't even come up with the right vocabulary for how much I love your stage show and your music. Can we talk about <laughs> what goes into the songwriting process? Um, so the songwriting process with us is, um, it, it varies really, um, because it's it's very, Sometimes it'll be as simple as like, I'll, I'll throw some kind of um, song together on my acoustic or something and just bring it that way. Or, or I'll even write it on my bass. Um, or, um, you know, like we just kind of get in the, in the room and just kind of go at it. Uh, some, you know, cause sometimes it's just as simple as that. Um, but very rarely is it just like the same, like two or three people writing the, the song it's very much like you know if we have somebody in our band that's good at a certain thing we uh want to make sure they're able to utilize it because like we've had a lot of people in and out and we've tried to use um them to the best of their abilities and um you know it's very democratic when it comes to songwriting um although I probably have a hand in all of it just because the fact that I am like the primary lyricist so I end up usually having a final say on like the arrangement sometimes oh. but uh but other than that, like, it's very much like, sometimes like songs start off in the stupidest ways possible <laughs> with us. And, and then we take the joke too far and now we're playing it in our set every night. <laughs> awesome. So it's not, it's just kind of organically um, comes about the material that you guys write together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very, it, it, I mean, like, cause we don't want to force anything. You know, like, because I mean, yeah, we were, we're weird and write strange music and stupid things that you have to count and whatever. But, you know, we don't like set out with like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to do a song in this time signature with the, in this key? And, and it's like, it's, it's usually like more like to convey a, a mood rather than to, I guess, um, be super technically proficient. Um, and that and that kind of goes, um, you know, about the stage show. Like we never really plan. Like we don't come up with like a bit to do live and then write a song around it. It's usually like we write a song and then we go, <laughs> you know, it would be funny. <laughs> uh, which is, you know, like um, one example is, you know, um, we, our opossum song, right? Where we, I bust out into this monologue, this like six minute monologue about the uh, various biology of the opossum. And uh, I, I, I come out, you know, so we, we would add, we added more and more to this song, theatrically speaking, like, and musically, but mostly theatrically as the years have gone on. And now at this point, I like, we bring like a steel trash can to every show just so I can roll around and like, tackle it and throw trash everywhere i wear a realistic opossum mask and scream at the audience sometimes <laughs> i play dead and the rest of my band <laughs> has to poke me until i wake up um oh my god i love you so much <laughs> uh, it's pretty extra what we do um but you know again it's it, it it's back to that kind of philosophy i have you know and I want to make sure that like, you know, an audience is, is come, you know, like everybody goes to a club expecting to see uh, a group just playing their instruments. And that's totally fine, especially the ones that do it really, really well. Um, but I would like to keep people on their toes. Oh, I can tell that. <laughs> yeah, uh, we never play the same set twice as, a, as another rule. Really? yeah I mean sure we have like certain songs that we usually like keep in the set but then like we alternate them and we like um and it's certainly with bits and things like that that we come up with uh and sketch type stuff we will change it up like there there's there will be shows where like 10 minutes before um we go on I'm like all right all right guys I got an idea let's do this. And then my band just kind of has to go, 
okay. <laughs> um, and and you usually we usually pull it off. Wow. Hurt myself all the time. <laughs> Gosh, I, you guys, everybody watching, everybody that's listening on the podcast, I cannot express enough how much you have to go check out this band, whether it's live, they're about to go on tour, whether you go to YouTube, you will not be disappointed. I'm telling you, it is a must see. This is a one of a kind situation we got here. Um, okay, Ali, we have a question from Paul. Paul is asking, what bases do you use and what amps are you running? Um, my, my, my main, my main squeeze is my, uh, my Spectre Legend six string bass. Um, I've been playing that, goodness, about 12 or 13 years, um, since I was about 16 years old. And, uh, that's, that's my main one. I love Spectres. Um, but I do, I do have a Fender Jazz bass you know, because you kind of have to have one of those or at least something like that. Um, I also have a ukulele bass as a, as a Kala U bass that yeah. I, I, I use that on one or two of the songs on, on one of our last albums. Um, but that that is a weird instrument. Have you ever played with one of those, Sunshine? Yeah, I have one and the the strings are like gummy worms kind of. They're like rubber. Yeah, it's like, uh, it, it makes you feel like you're not supposed to touch it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but it makes cool sounds. I like to run like effects pedals and things like that with it. And it makes the worst kind of feedback. But I like that kind of shit. Um, I also run, um, it's a dark, I run the dark glass uh, microtubes um, the, the, for a head that's, that's been my baby for like three years now. Love it. Um, and I run just through a good old uh, Ampeg uh, 4x10. Oh, That's oh, my yeah. main, main setup. Mm -hmm. well, here absolutely. At, here at the Sunshine Show, we absolutely 1000% um, um, love Ampeg. So if you do not have an Ampeg, go run to your local music shop and pick one up today. <laughs> That sounded that sounded like an obligation. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> tell me, tell me about your strings. What what strings you run into those to that specter? You know, well, okay. So because I play a, a, a tree trunk for an instrument uh, with the six string bass, um, I use Diodarios. Um, those are just like kind of the go to things that I that you know when I can get the six string. But you know, like that's that's definitely what I'm in and like a thicker gauge, like a 135 is my thickest string. Um, but, you know, sometimes, you know, because obviously emergencies happen uh, and you're out on the road and, a, and you pop a string or your strings are old, I have to like that, that, that high six string, I have to actually utilize like an electric guitar string for that and then melt plastic onto the ball so it actually fits in the nut and the bridge. <laughs> Oh my god, all this nut and balls talk. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's why we're here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so That's, this, the, that's the kind of show we were on. So what the fuck you actually just like figured that out like on the road because you needed an extra string? Well, I figured it out because I was poor, really. Because like, like six string bass string, I mean bass strings are just expensive, much much less like the six string packs, which are like, you know, $35 for a decent pack. And um, you know, and it was easier to get like five string packs, right? And so and sometimes that's all you can get, you know. And I do, it's not a matter of like. Cause yeah, I play a four string. I play a five string, no problem. You know, you can say all the new no, dark only need four bullshit all day long. I can still get my way around it. My point is, I need that string for the type of music that I play for, in the context of the stuff I've written, right? So yeah, I uh, brought, broke my broke my uh, high C string, and when I was like seventeen or eighteen, I figured out if you. Um, yeah, well, there's a couple ways I've gone about this. Um, either I'll take like a like the plastic lid of like a like a Mountain Dew bottle or something, and I'll melt it, the it to where the plastic starts to drip on the uh, on the string, and it'll like harden around uh, the little ball at the end, and I'll run it through the bridge, and it and it fits. Um, or I'll take 
another like a part of the one of my broken strings or something and I'll, I'll like loop it and knot it through the other ball and that will also work wow. um sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do right <laughs> yeah that's that's my main setup and honestly i had to do that not that long ago too like within the last six months <laughs> oh so we need to get you a string endorsement it sounds yeah, like yeah you hear that diadario <laughs> look me up Fuck. Allie needs the hookup, Please. okay? <laughs> um, so <laughs> what does Paul say? Yep, I did five for a while. Low B is a must in punk and death metal. Never did a six string. Well, Paul, you need that six string. I've never, dude, I can't do the six string. Like sometimes like it's like it throws me off that extra okay. string. How much time and patience and dedication did it take to actually be able to learn the six string? So I, I, I guess I, I'm a little different in that regard. So like, you know, I picked up my first little four string bass when I was like 12 or 13, right? But then by the time, like I was barely 16, like it was like a month after my birthday, I got the Spectre six string that I currently still play. And so really I played a six string for far longer than I did with just the four string you know what I mean and uh, I just kind of you know because like it's not like tuned like a guitar either so you can't if it's like if you have that knowledge it's not really gonna help you that much aside from just being able to finger an instrument um it's definitely a different sort of thing like I've handed it off to people and they're just like nope <laughs> take it back take it back yeah which to be fair, you know, I've had those moments too. I'm one of my, my good friends, um, Lauren Fernandez, who's in Fable Cry, plays a 12 string bass. And I mean, and it's chromatically 12 string. It's not like a double dot six. It is like the neck is like this thick. And yeah. Have you played it's, it? It's a lot. And one time they handed that to me and I was like, what am I, what am I supposed to do with this? This is a heart. And if that wasn't even that, if that, if you know that it, it, it's worse than that, because they ended up getting an 18 string as well, which is double dot, but it's ridiculous and they can play the hell out of it. So as long as you can play it, I'm all about it, <laughs> wow. even if it is a heart. That is crazy. Like, is that something that you have to sit down to play or like, do they actually have a strap in their leg? Like they, they get down on it. They like strap it and just, yeah. That is it's, so cool. It, like, it's a whole thing, which. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. But yeah, the six string for me, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's just what I'm used to at this point. And like, sometimes it's funny because like, I will, you know, I, I do play a four string fairly often and um but it's funny when i do because i feel like oh it's so small <laughs> um and i've been playing like and i've been getting more into like just playing electric guitar for like composition reasons lately and um i have like a little epiphone sg that i have and i'm like this is really small this is like a baby this is like 10 pounds at most <laughs> and meanwhile you know my specter six string back problem series uh <laughs> legend base like <laughs> <laughs> um it's like 30 pounds like minimum it's 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 a pretty it, it's a monster wow. and, I, and i throw it around i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna probably regret it when i'm a little older <laughs> well you know we only live once and i think that you just gotta live it up baby and you certainly look like you are <laughs> doing that and i would never be I would never have guessed that that bass is so heavy, the way that you play it on stage and the way you're like gracefully like jumping around and doing your thing. Like, holy shit, man. I had no <laughs> fucking idea. <clears throat> like my rig- It comes off way more graceful than it is. <laughs> yeah, you're so graceful with it. My Rickenbacker is pretty fucking heavy, but probably not as heavy as like what you're dealing with. But like, I know once you get on stage, like, even if you wanted to chill the fuck out like you can't like there's just something like 
in I can see it like it, it's in you you're a performer and like that's what you love to do so whether you you couldn't chill out if you wanted to chill out so yeah. <laughs> no I, I'm like that even at practice sometimes I go too hard I did it the other night and uh yeah that's just how it is do Once you, you feel it you feel it do you like ever headbang too too much and then you have like neck problems and shit going on uh, yeah actually <laughs> and I've had to and I've had to like cool it a bit because um you know it's funny because I used to do like a lot of windmilling like that whole thing you know and like, you uh, used to do what? like like when you spin your hair the whole like windmill oh, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. thing I used, yeah 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 and um I had I used to have so many old bald men come up to me after gigs and be like you're gonna regret that <laughs> <laughs> and you know to be fair as much as I I don't like uh that kind of thing being explained to me in such a way um you know got, I got I gotta I gotta give them credit where credit's due and be like yeah I'm probably gonna chill a little bit on that but um that doesn't mean I can't move around in other ways I don't I just don't have to spin my head around at 80 miles an hour you know <laughs> You know, I think like, cause I do that a lot too, um, or at least I, I did pre pandemic when I was touring and, and doing all this shit, I've taken a couple of years off, um, to heal my neck. No, I'm just joking, but, uh, I would <laughs> do that a lot and, oh my God, there would be days where it would take me literally fucking three days to recover from a fucking show. Like crazy. Yeah. It's like aerobics, you know, or, or what well, bad for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Let's see. We have Reyes Cisneros in the chat from Taos, New Mexico. I love Taos, New Mexico. Have you been to Taos, Ellie? I have not. Oh, Taos is very magical and special. They have these structures called earth ships. Have you heard of the earth ship before? I don't think so. No. So they're self-sustaining buildings. And once you like, all, they're made out of like cob and straw and, you know, earth and mud and, and recycled things like bottles and stuff. And um, once you build it, like you just have to put the cost into the, into the housing. And after that, it's completely self-sustainable. It has its own electricity, its own um, water, and, you know, the whole, the whole shabam. And so wow. that is located out in Taos. And they have a cute little Earthship community out there that's fucking spectacular. So uh, if you ever go through New Mexico, wow. huh. that is a really cool place to go to. So what's up, Reyes? If you guys have any questions for Ali, drop them in the chat. You know how we play this game, baby. Um, let's see, Don said he has three possums by his apartment. Cool, I, want, I, want, I, I would like to keep those. <laughs> if you uh if if you happen to be you know presenting them in that way <laughs> so what is the thing with the possum like that's your favorite animal yes yeah <laughs> um it's it, honestly it, it starts off pretty wholesome i guess you could say uh you know me being from tennessee and stuff and all that it's just like you know we got possums that's a very southern thing right and when I was a very small child, um, I hyper fixated um, on opossums because I saw one one day in a parking lot. And you know how you are when you're a little kid, you know, you just find things that you're really into and that, that was possums for me. And it led to my dad calling me possum for, well, he still does. And, <laughs> and um, so that's just been my nickname with a lot of my family and, uh, it's um, just kind of always been there ingrained in my mind a little bit, right? So, you know, a few years ago, um, so we'd always talked about like, one day we're gonna write a really stupid possum song, right? And uh, we did, it's 12 and a half minutes long. And- uh, Wow. <laughs> that, okay. and the album cut, like the live cuts longer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, because of the, you know, things I mentioned earlier in this interview and all of that that goes into that uh stage production uh it kind of became the mascot of the band uh you know just opossums in general and I'm cool with that because they're they're adorable and they're wonderful and they are uh God's little trash angels that um 
our blessings upon this earth. Oh my God. And they carry their babies on their backs. Yes. Yeah, you know, when they get old enough, when, they're like uh, kangaroos. They also have them in their pouch before that. Really? Mm -hmm. They're related to kangaroos and koalas and things like that. Holy shit, you guys. Uh, if you didn't know that, you learn something new every time on the Sunshine <laughs> Show. I didn't know that. That makes them even cuter to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're marsupials. There are only marsupial in North America. And uh, oh. they they are important to, to our ecosystem. So, so please be nice to them wherever you are, wherever you are listening. Oh. Uh, my dog reminds me a little bit of a of a, of a possum because he has no hair and just like <laughs> his little tail. I don't know. It's weird, but I uh, I think that they're super cute too. So they're I adorable. Love them. I was late to a show once because um, I found out last minute. My ex girlfriend hits me up one day, like before a show, and is like insert famous instagram possum is at this place right now <laughs> and i'm like what and so yeah i went to a tattoo parlor and and met a famous an instagram famous opossum and was late to load in <laughs> oh my god that is fucking adorable everyone forgave me they're like it's ally <laughs> <laughs> you come back with your little picture with like Pete the possum or whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Sesame the opossum in this case. <laughs> Perfect. So let's talk a little bit about Zappa. Um, it seems that he has a, a nice influence in your life. You also mentioned Oingo Boingo, which I am a huge fan of. Tell me when you started listening to this music. Was it presented to you at an early age or was it when you were further along in your musical path? Well, with Zappa, which, you know, Zappa just kind of changed my musical outlook altogether forever. Um, it was, I, I was really into like a lot of like thrash metal stuff. Um, we're in this, and this kind of led to Zappa because uh, the bass player for a band called uh, at the time called uh, Warbringer, uh, the bass player at the time was a guy named Ben Bennett, and he used to wear this like this the same Zappa t shirt, <laughs> like every single thing I ever. And like when I saw them, I was like 15, I think, and it just got me interested. And I'm like, I should check out this Frank Zappa guy with like no frame of reference whatsoever. And I picked up, I picked up Freak Out randomly on a whim at a record store and uh that was a good that that was that was a weird first listen um <laughs> and yeah I, I couldn't stop thinking about that that album and I just kind of after that I just delved into the and into the stuff and just really studied um a lot of what he did especially as like a composer um he was all he was light years away like ahead of like everyone and I really think like if um I, I couldn't really even imagine the kind of stuff he would be making if he was still around, you know, he, he, uh, who knows, he'd probably, at this point, he'd be like 80, so he'd probably need a break anyway, but like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but frankly, like, yeah, like that, that guy completely shattered um, in, any sort of like musical idea you know idea that i had previously had and just threw it out the window and uh i've been uh making strange sounds ever since <laughs> very cool my uh best friend who lives in texas amelia her son orion hello orion if you're out there auntie sunshine loves you um he is obsessed with baby snakes when yeah was little like and then you know the video is claymation um and so then orion got very much into claymation and that whole deal but um zappa is a a national treasure and um way way ahead of his time don mentions king crimson is this also an influence for you big time big time big time um in fact uh before the pandemic uh, the entire band went and saw King Crimson together, uh, including one of our ex-members. That's how much, like, you know, King Crimson really, yeah, definitely one of my, my bigger influences, um, and as well as, like, a lot of the other members of the band. Um, 
and I, and actually they were my first bigger show after the pandemic too because it just so happened to work out that way they were my last show before everything got shut down and they were my first show after everything started to come back a little bit and um you know like it's it's just the the way the music just is almost cinematic you know a lot of it and it's, it has a certain quality that just really appeals to me and uh they're not really like a lot of the other like progressive rock bands of that era um by any means totally on another level sure absolutely mm -hmm. so john says you're like the macgyver of bass players since you have your string manipulation down <laughs> i mean you know i i'm not as uh i'm not as like I, I wish i was better at stuff like that i would wish i could like you know make pickups out of like you know bubble gum and like tape or whatever but uh I mean, unfortunately, I got to go to the, 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 the guitar uh, store guy every now and again and be like, can you fix this? <laughs> <laughs> I did something to this. Um, but yeah, I guess you could say that. At least I found a little trick. I found a, a little MacGyver trick. trick. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you're, if you're poor and you own a six string bass, you know what to do now. <laughs> oh, man. Let's talk about tour a little bit. So you say that, is it Flummox or Flumux? It's flummox, flummox, like flummox, yeah. Flummox. So you're mm -hmm. saying flummox has been together for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about like tours. What's the most like rock and roll story that you have or that or that you can share with us? Uh, <laughs> yeah, because there's a few of those that I probably shouldn't. Um, I mean, you know, I, I will say like we're only just now able to really tour like a whole whole lot just because we haven't really had like a we've had lineup problems and vehicle situations this whole time, but now we actually got both of those together and we're actually doing stuff. But that being said, that has not really stopped us from having some fat shit things happen uh, within. With, I don't know, like there's so many directions one could go about with that. I mean, like. I mean, and sometimes it has to do with the stage antics because that usually sets a vibe for the rest of the night, depending on where we're playing. Like we played um, <laughs> back in November, we played at a house show and like they had booked the show with the idea of it being kind of warm outside because they were going to have like an out, it was like an outdoor stage. It was like a house. It, it was like a stage in, in the backyard of a house. And there was literally like 200 people in this backyard. It was wild. But it ended up being freezing cold, like below freezing. And I, I, we had this whole sort of thing planned and we were just like, you know, fuck it, we're gonna do it anyway. So that thing uh, ended up being partially uh, ritualistic. We basically, I, I I basically got up in front of the audience and like stripped down almost naked, uh, oh. tits out, all that stuff. Had my band members spray blue and red paint into my hands while I was smearing it all over myself, yelling at the audience that I wanted to be purple. Then I uh, put my bass back on, played like half the song, took it back off, came out in a robe uh, and my goat mask and all of that. And, my, and I'm covered in paint and like, the audience is like, and this and this happened a couple of times. But this particular time, <laughs> like my guitar player Max said, it was like a movie. It didn't feel real. But like the whole audience, like in the front of this stage area, like bowed down while I, as I crouched down and I brought this. I'm gonna go ahead and disclaimer here. I have I do this thing right where I have a baby doll, a classic baby doll and it's full of gummy worms, right? And I and I do this fake ritual where I stab the baby like multiple times and I pull it open, it's full of candy. It's like a pinata. I did that mostly naked in like 28 degree weather, um, <laughs> covered in paint uh, and fed um, a bunch of queer hippies somewhere in a, in a, in a rural town in Tennessee. And, um, that one, that one is the most recent thing I can think of. <laughs> oh um, I'm telling you all, 
that is some dedication. That is some dedication <laughs> to strip down in such cold weather and still be able to go through with that whole stage show. Um, I mean, it's it's performance art. <laughs> That's were what you, I tell myself, at least. Were you in theater arts in high school or anything like that? You know, surprisingly enough, no. Um, I I was I was a bad kid who did drugs in high school, so I probably didn't do. Uh, I I I could have applied myself a little bit more, but I was always interested, in, as I mentioned earlier. You know, like um, you with bands that were able to add like a theatrical element and I'm also like really like into like Stephen Sondheim you know and um music you know people who write musicals and composers and everything else Andrew Lloyd Webber and so forth and uh the drama and everything that goes into it I, I definitely um tried to implement within just what we do as a rock band because like you know it's it's a rock band quote unquote when it comes right down to it but i mean it's it's like call i don't know like we we add so much more but when, when you know when you bear it down when you rip it down to its bare essentials it's we're a rock band we're just we just decide to do uh unnecessary things that some <laughs> <laughs> to some people i i think i love it though because that is the thing about being an artist is that you have to constantly reinvent yourself your stage show and constantly be like thinking about those tiny little things that like you mentioned earlier people are going to take away from the show and they're not going to fucking forget you or forget what you've been presenting and like I know for a gut, for a fact, if I went to one of your shows, I'd be like buzzing for like a year after it because <laughs> there's so much that's put into it. And yeah, dude, so fucking cool. Um, I know we have a mutual friend, Matt Owen. He plays tuba. Um, and whenever. Yes. Okay, very cool. Because he was super stoked about the interview. I just tagged him right now to see. He may be busy though, but he's a fellow tuba player. Um, yeah. well, I don't know if you play tuba or not, but bass. I don't. Okay. <laughs> Low end. But I, but I know Matt can play. I, I, I remember him from the opposite box days. Okay. Um, I, like 10 oh, okay. years ago. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So I played tuba, um, and then I moved to bass, but I still, I love tuba so much has like a huge, um, place in my heart. Um, so all those tuba players out there keep uh, rocking and rolling we see you we see you if, uh, if i can get a tuba player in my band i'll get one like and like I, I think it's like like even just like stage show wise like it's such a huge like instrument you know like it really adds a lot to every time that i put a band together i always um get a tuba player because um every band needs one <laughs> you know you're not wrong and like you know speaking of matt owen i i love to tell the story people what you know he, he used to be he used to play in a band called opposite box around here and uh the first time i saw opposite box was about 10 years ago and they led from like one of their songs to gin and juice by snoop dogg into uh zombie wolf by frank zappa into the hey arnold theme song into uh the entirety of yyz with a wow. tuba with tuba the entire time and i'll never forget that i like it's been like 10 years and i'm still just like this one time <laughs> um but yeah yeah matt owen hadn't seen that guy probably since around the same time wow that is impressive impressive i would love to see that or some video of that um, me too actually <laughs> i'm wondering if it was a fever dream sometimes <laughs> oh man very cool you guys we have about 15 minutes left if you have any questions drop them in the chat if not we're gonna keep rocking and rolling a question right. <laughs> a question i like to ask all my guests ali is if you could throw a dinner party for any five musicians dead or alive who would those musicians be and what would you serve at the dinner party? Oh, damn. Okay. Um, 
I would love to have Frank, of course, Frank Zappa at, at the dinner party. Um, I feel like that's just kind of there. Um, goodness, that's dead or alive too. So that makes things a lot harder. Um, Geezer Butler, uh, Haley Dahl, Ronnie James Dio, uh, Les Claypool, Ooh. and Jim Morrison. Oh, <laughs> Jim Morrison actually went to the same elementary school as I did, and I'm from wow. like yeah, I'm from a tiny little town in Texas called Kingsville. It's in South Texas, and uh, there's a Navy base out there, and his parents were actually in the Navy. And so That's right. He went to kindergarten out there, and a lot of people don't know that, but um, it is true, you guys. So you can look yeah. it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> um, awesome. So that sounds like a fun party. What would you serve yeah. at your party? Um, I mean... You know, because I'm, I'm from the South, so I feel like it, it would have to be something like, you know, I'm not going to try to make Italian or something. Uh, so I don't know. I would like, I would just try to like, cause I mean, I'm not sure if I would, if, if it was that kind of dinner party, like I'm, I don't trust my cooking enough, you see. Um, so I would probably like, and I mean, if those people are coming over, I've got to have a budget, theoretically speaking. So I'd just like to get some, some folks over that can cook some soul food of some kind, you know, uh, you know, just like fried chicken and uh, co and collard greens and that sort of sh shit, because I love that, you know. Um, and I feel like at least in this hypothetical scenario, um, you know, that's what one would expect to be served uh, by a uh, anthropomorphic opossum southern bell as myself <laughs> i love it i think that is a great party and a great time let's see what is paul saying thank you both for taking time out of your day for us and checking the videos videos out made a fan you all kill it thank you paul i told you that they are badass i told you <laughs> thank you paul Okay, yeah. so I know you have a new album that's about to come out. Oh, uh, I know. It's gross. Let's, uh, let's talk all about it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that album is called Reflumix, and it drops on Friday, uh, April Fool's Day. It's not a joke. It's, it's really happening. Um, we're doing an album release show with it in Nashville, and then we're going to tour the Midwest a little bit. We're hitting Louisville, Cincinnati, Chicago, and Lafayette. Uh, and then we'll tour some more, but we haven't announced that yet, so be patient. Um, <laughs> has been booked at least. And um, Reflumixed is the first self-produced, completely self-produced album that we've done, which is great because it means we have all the say on how it sounds like, which we never really had. Um, our record label, Needle Juice Records, is uh, putting it out on CDs, cassettes, vinyl, all the stuff. Uh, we have uh, uh, grinders for tobacco use only if you're in a state like mine, um, or in this, or in this case, still, hummingbirds. Is it still huh? is it still illegal over there? Um. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, again belt buckle of the bible belt right um but you know uh we um we're putting it out though through needle juice and it's uh basically like yeah so like early on in this band's existence we were signed to another label and we put out a couple of albums with them and i kind of consider them like our demo albums almost because like the production value wasn't very good and there was only like 200 copies of each one made anyway and uh, it got a little bit of a following, a little, you know, a little bit online, but nothing really to, you know, that was substantial. And when we got signed to Needle Juice and we have this sort of system, we're like, you know what, the so those songs that we're still playing from those albums sound better live than they do on this album. So why don't we just re-record those and make them like completely different, completely rearrange some of them and make them pretty much completely new compositions in some regard. Uh, and that's what Reflumix is. And uh, there's an opossum on the cover. 
I know that is a terrible shock. You you okay, I mean, I <laughs> probably probably don't believe that, but uh, yeah, it's um I'm really excited to have it out. I there, there's a lot of stupid bass guitar stuff that I do on it, um and and that's what we are we're all here for, right? It's stupid bass guitar stuff. At oh, least yeah. that's why. <laughs> but yeah, it, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to touring. Um. You know, because like obviously, you know, there was a time period where I didn't know when the hell I was going to tour again, and now I'm touring again, and I'm really excited about it. So hopefully, I'll see some of y'all out there, and we'll we'll get out to California soon enough, sunshine. I promise you. Yes, you have to. Oh my god, and you guys all have to come stay with me, and we are going to have the most fun. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Um. Paul it. says that he will be waiting in Colorado for a show. That's on the way. <laughs> um where, so do you guys book your own stuff do you have management like what's the deal or now we're booking our own stuff that being said that'll change um in fact like that's that's you know we're, we're still like we're not a new band but we're also new to a lot of things um and we're because we're just now kind of getting that momentum and getting that 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 good chemistry and that leverage so we're we're, we're getting there we're, we do have um we, we do have some people we're talking to so we'll definitely be the plan is to definitely get out west um as soon as we can yeah. um probably yeah. another like east coast thing is going to happen before the end of the year and then we're going to go we're actually about to record the next album uh in the fall wow. as we yeah so about that too while we were re-recording and rearranging much of our old stuff we were concurrently writing the next one so we've written most of a new album already and uh we're gonna re we're gonna re record that one wow how awesome girl you are yeah. killing it trying to <laughs> uh, let's see jeremy hill says specter bass for life that's right for life seriously i sold my soul there's this whole thing about it uh can't get out of the contract oh i know how that feels i'll tell you what i know how it feels um sick so how does everybody go and find the new album that is going to be released on april fools it's gonna be pretty much anywhere music stream the spotify the itunes all that stuff it's going to be on needlejuicerecords.com it's going to be on flummox.bandcamp.com it's going to you can already pre-order it at our band camp right now you can do that that's a thing that you can do with your money if that is what you are willing to financially uh expend upon and uh it's it's going to be there's already like two music videos out there's a couple singles uh you can pretty much hear half the record <laughs> already uh but it's 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 gonna be fun I'm, I'm really excited it's it really i know a lot of artists say this about their newest work but it really truly is the best we've ever sounded because again we've had control over everything this time and it needed it it absolutely needed it <laughs> so now were you signed previously to another label or what was the deal mm -hmm. with that we were originally signed to a label called Tridroid, and they um, and they were like a little underground label. They're still around, but they're owned by different people. Um, they're a lot bigger now, actually, than they used to be, um, as far as like independent labels are concerned. Um, and I actually know some people that are still signed to them now, and they're having a good time. Um, but at the time, <laughs> the, things weren't super great. But um, not only that, but we were kind of in this sort of situation we had a produce we had another producer at the time and uh you know he he really did a lot for us he got us where we needed to be in a lot of ways but he also like you know especially kind of towards the the latter part of us working with him he just kind of got to a point where um he was unwilling to um make any changes to mixes after like the first time or second time and things like that and you know it, it just became easier for us to do it ourselves especially because uh our guitar player chase mccutcheon um is a master engineer he's actually fairly sought after in the live engineer kind of realm here in, in nashville on broadway and stuff and uh he um he mixed in he mixed this whole record and we had uh, angel here audio um fire tools uh 
master it. And uh, that's, yeah, it, it really is like the best we've ever sounded. And best part, one of the best parts about it was me and the drummer uh, recorded our rhythm tracks exactly at the same time together. And I feel like a lot of bands should just do that. And a lot of bands do do that, but that was the first time we were able to do that. And so locked in, you know, me and my drummer, we've been playing together for like six years now. So we're, we're on it. <laughs> so has, so your drummer has been in the band the entire time um, or for the past six years? For the past six years. Yeah. He's been in the band about a little over half the time we've existed. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely used to each other's playing. He's, um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Belmont grad and uh, Chester Thompson actually from Frank Zappa and uh, Weather Report was one of his professors. And he just kind of like has this very jazzy style and this fusion kind of style that he, uh, that he adds um, to our music as a result. And yeah, it comes off like, <laughs> so good especially because i'm influenced by a lot of that stuff as well and yeah me and alan are match on that on that section i think so tell everybody at home the importance of um really locking in and having um the right drummer to your bass playing are you still there did i lose you oh there oh, you yeah. are there you are I'm back. I, it, it went out for a minute. I think there's about to be a tornado here or something. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Well, we should start wrapping this up. We only have three minutes anyways. Um, so what's your best piece of advice that you could give um, people in the music industry or maybe just life advice in general? Gotta get underground. Uh, best piece of... Um, I don't know. Just... Uh, I, I, I wish I could I could give uh, a, a, a good quote really aside from just like you know keep at what you're doing if you really love what you're doing because um, that's the only way that I've gotten as far as I have there's been plenty of times where I wanted to quit and I know it's really cliche you know especially because people have different living scenarios and you know things get thrown in our laps that we don't necessarily uh, prepare for all the time but you know, at least with like this band and like, you know, the dedication that I put into it myself and just kind of kept it afloat as much as I can. I would just say like the best piece of advice is, you know, as far as like playing, you know, bass or any kind of instrument or just any sort of artistic thing that you, you might be involved with, just keep doing it, you know, cause you never really know um, who's gonna see it who's gonna wanna do stuff with you and who's gonna support you, like my support in life this whole time. And I wouldn't want it, I wouldn't know what to do with without those folks. And a lot of that is the reason I even know those people is because I've kept doing the thing. So yeah, just keep doing the thing, as cliche as that sounds. No, oh, I love it. That's beautiful, wonderful advice. We um, are going to wrap this up because we need Allie to be safe. Okay, I don't know what happened. <laughs> in tornado. The, said C. the sirens aren't going yet, but it's quite windy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had such a good time with Me you. Too. Uh, I know time is precious, and I just really appreciate you taking an hour out of your life of to hang out with us. Um, thank you so much thank everybody at home um, thank you so much for everybody at home everybody who's listening on the podcast i love you guys so much um remember to always be kind you never know what people may be going through stay safe out there and keep rocking and fucking rolling on three alley let's say bye one two three bye, bye. <laughs> we'll see you later stay safe girl I will. I'm going to get underground. <laughs>